I wondered if you knew about this bow saw, this frame saw. This is a saw that's been used in mainland Europe um, for centuries. And um, here in the good old UK, the US of A, generally they used a brass back tenon saw. Were these superior to these? Not really, not at all, in fact. In fact, craftsmen are still using these today in different parts of Europe. And why were they? Well, let me give you a quick demo because we're going to make one but I just want to show you what this saw will do. Straight off. So if you're cutting the cheeks of your tenons, it's very effective, just as effective as a tenon saw. So this one, I just bought the, uh, the blade, nothing else. It's very effective, very effective. So this is a basic, very standard joinery saw. This would be used for joinery. So here, We cross cut the shoulders and we're going a with and across the grain about equally. This will give you some idea of why the Europeans, the mainland Europeans, didn't really adopt the tenon saw. They didn't need it. Very effective. Four shoulders, four cheeks. In a matter of a few minutes. There it is. So you can see it was very effective. It worked just as well as a tenon saw, if not better. I thought it was working fine. I could do big cheeks with this much bigger than I can do with a regular tenon saw. What about dovetails? Well, let's just take a quick look. I'm not going to do the whole dovetail, but watch here. Does that work or what? Same blade, same saw. I don't think I could beat that. Perfect. I want to show you how to make a frame saw. This saw is very useful. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't need any turning parts to it because it's a frame, a, a joinery saw. So we're going to use this for joinery. We can use it for cross-cutting two by fours. We can use it for cross-cutting limbs in a garden. We can use it for just about anything. It will cross-cut and it will rip in the same saw, depending on the blade. I've got this one laid out. This one I'm going to lay out. I've measured up from the end here, seven and a half inches, from, uh, from the bottom here, seven and a half inches up. I made a line across, squared a line across, and I made a second line and marked a second point here. That's going to be a tenon piece. This is going, the mortise is going to hold a tenon on the end of this, not very deep. And this part is the width of the blade, but to get the start point here, I just measured up 3 8 of an inch, about 10 millimeters, on each side like this and like this. And then I, what I'm going to do is show you on the other one. So this one comes on here. I just took that mark like this. One, two. All the ends of my materials are squared. Every surface has been planed. And then I'm just going to take this tin. This is a three inch diameter tin. So this is just a regular uh, uh, vegetable can there. I'm going to put this on both sides so that you can see where I'm shooting for as I cut and file, rasp, whatever I do to this. So there. I'm going to round the ends just for comfort as much as anything. Good, I'm ready to go. I've got to get these marks off this one. I want them to match one another. 
So I'm going to square the lines across here. One, two. And I'm gonna, this is my stop and start line to receive this saw blade itself. In the middle of here, I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to eyeball the center here. So I go up here. Now this wood is spruce and it could be in the US. SP and F will work perfectly for this. Uh, if SP and F is just a stud grade, it's a spruce pine and fir. And uh, any pine would work too. So those lines I need to cut down. So I'm going to cut down those first using a frame saw that I already have made. So I'm going to go down that line right in the center, across the top. down to the line like that and the same on this one get the line square across first drop the hand as you go down this is fighting me a little bit there that. Then I'm going to take a rasp. See this little shape here? Take that down. This is um, not really a necessary step but it stops the saw from catching when it's being used. And you can do that with a chisel too. You can take off the bulk of it, take one half of that, pop it, pop it, pop it, just take the bulk off. And then follow through just to speed things up a little bit. But you want to stay close to your line. So we do that on all four pieces. Okay. Now this is going to be the bottom of my saw and this is the bottom of my saw on these two faces these are opposite so this is where this rail is going across here this would be called the beam the blade will be in this side and the string will be across the top so I want to put a couple of holes in here I've already marked this I measured in three quarters of an inch from this outside edge the size of this material is 16 inches long two inches wide and one inch thick so I've come in three quarters from this edge and then I put this, I place this on this point on the curve, I placed the blade here and then I pulled it till it was over the center line of there. I want to make sure it's clear here. So that's where I got this center line for the hole from. Can you see right in there? So the blade's not sticking out at the end. Why did I go this far in? Why didn't I put it in the center? Just gives a little bit of extra meat on the wood to help keep the strength where I want it. So I'm going to uh, transfer this mark to get this the same onto this piece, same distance here. Square the line across. There's my three quarters in. So I just bore through these. I'm just going to use a hand drill. It's plenty good enough for this first cordless drill. There. And that's just going to take a screw just like that to hold the blade in place later. Same on this one. All the way through. I'll take my bow saw, just clean out the, the chaff inside. Like that. 
Now the next stage is to cut the notches and chop the mortise. I've set a mortise gauge up for a quarter inch chisel so the chisel goes right in between the two points here, maybe slightly oversized, that's up to you, right in here, two lines. And right in here, two lines, that's all. Can you see those? Nice, crisp mortise lines there. And we're going to chop this mortise half an inch deep. It doesn't need to be any deeper. We're going to be cutting this little scallop in here to receive the tenon. Very simple, this bit. So this is the width. I'm starting away from my line, in between the two lines. And then I chop and then I go right on the pencil line here and chop. It's not an exact science this. This is just something to get you started in woodworking. It's very inexpensive. It gets a saw in your hands, in your child's hands. So I'm already down to my half inch depth here. So I'm stopping myself from going any deeper. The reason we don't want to go too deep is we don't want to weaken this, this part of the frame saw. It's important that it has sufficient strength. Turn my chisel around, back up here, just take this a little bit deeper here. And that's that part almost done. So now I just go in with my chisel fingers underneath to stop bruising the wood, although this is a saw, it's not fine furniture, but just to stop bruising the wood around the perimeter of the hole. So that's that bit done. Nice, crisp, clean mortise hole. Perfectly fine for this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this um, next development in here. So I go in with my chisel right, I'm going to do one side first, I go here, go lighter, take out that midsection here, take out the bulk of the waste, just like this, and the same on this side, staying above your line, like this, then bevel down, just follow that radius as closely as you can. Don't go below that pencil line. Change hands here. Do the same on the other side. So you can see I'm right in that bevel. Just perfectly. As near as I can get it see where how close there's my pencil line you can see I'm very close to my line same on this other one just the same so a center cut that's just a stop cut just to take out some of the the bulk and then you're gonna go bevel down now this is quite soft wood so you may at some point after you've made this frame saw you may want to choose a harder wood or you may want to choose a harder wood before. The idea of using spruce or something like that is the weight and strength. I think spruce may be the strongest wood per strength weight ratio of any wood in the world. So now somebody will probably correct me, but I think it's pretty close to that. I'm right on there. So what I did here, I just rounded a piece of wood to the shape I want just to make something to just clean up those areas just a little bit, just to smooth them out and get the radius where I want it. That's one part. Now I have to put a tenon on the end of each one of these. How did I get to the length of this beam? I want to show you, then you can follow suit. That's going to go that way. So this here, this here. Make sure you have everything arranged. I've already cut most of the stuff to the actual finished length. Here's my blade. My blade goes in here. Just find the hole inside. 
and just pop one of the screws in like this. This is going to fix the location, that's all, so we know the exact length that we want between the beams. Now your saw blade may be very different depending on where you buy it from, it may be different than mine, so just bear that in mind. So I can't really give you the size that I exactly have because it may vary. So that's just the threads of the screw catching on the metal. So now we've got this distance here, right here to here. So I have a set distance there and I want this part to be the same as the distance. When I close this up, I want this to be 20, in my case it's 20 and 5 eighths. So there is 20 and 5 eighths. This then goes on here, and this goes to the extent of the radius. So that's the extent of the radius. So that means that <coughs> I'm parallel. I've cut this to length. I've got this radius. Let me mark this on here so you can see what I'm talking about. I've got the bean can here. So that goes there. this will go right in between those two points. Can you see that? So that works perfectly. That means when we pull this together with the string, this will stretch the blade to give it the tautness that it needs. So that's how I got the length of the beam. That means this beam actually is half an inch long, longer than I, can you see there? That's my actual shoulder, the end of the shoulder. So if I put this here and here, let me square that with a square, because this does need, these two sides do need to be exactly the same for the radius. In between there, here's my marking gauge, my mortise gauge, is marking the position of the tenon like this. Go ahead and mark that on here for you. Oops, that's not it, that's it there. So that's exactly centered in my piece of wood. Then I go back to my bean can and I got these two points here. I want this point and this point. Can you see that? So I want this point, those are the two extremes of the radius that I want on this side. So I go right up tight, make my arc, can you see it there? So this is going to have a radius on there, same on this side here. Now if I am slightly under on this side, it's going to make the end piece twist around just a little bit so I don't want that so I'm going to try here to be as exact as I can I'm going to take the square let's just take a quick look and see how close I am to that square and there I am can you see how close I am so I'm exactly where I want to be in terms of accuracy This part here, you could use the bow saw if you've already made one, not likely. So here, just follow the arc a little bit. It doesn't have to be exact, you see. Remember neatness though. Watch what happens here now. I'm gonna go back to my can I want to take the knife, let me turn this so you can see. Okay. Here. So I'm going to just take my can again. I want to make a definitive shoulder line with a knife wall, just for clarity. So this comes around here. Doesn't have to be scored very deep. Just follow that radius here. Flip over and do the same. Again, this side. This will help the start and stop and give it the precision that I want. 
Now then, what we're going to do is we're going to saw down this with a fine saw. So I'm going to do, I'm going on the waist side of the wood with this first cut here. Again, follow the arc close to it. It doesn't have to be exact because we're going to trim this in a minute. I should cut this from your side then the fibers will be supported on the inside but this is quicker and easier so now I'm going to take a smaller chisel maybe a half inch chisel and I'm just going to go right into that knife wall here so I'm feeling for the edge there I'm right in it just pare down any angular corners Follow the radius around. Like this. this wood has got some really hard spots in it, which you don't really always expect. Do the same on this side. clean up and you can actually take a file onto this if you want to you won't need to if you're using a softwood you certainly won't need to because it will compress into a perfect radius now this should fit into here now the, the width of the tenon may be just a hair too thick which it is so I'm just going to go in here just pare down a little bit on the wall inside here, like this. I left a little bit on just so I could pare down. Take out, oops, wrong one. Take out the inside, like this. Try not to lean on the ends because it'll just bruise the wood here. And the length of the tenon, too, doesn't need to hit the end. You want it to be free of the end. So what we're going to do, because the, because this is radiused, I want to radius this part here a little bit, too. So I'm going to go back to my rasp. Just take out a little bit of the corners. This will allow a little bit of movement inside the mortise to put the leverage where I want it. And hopefully this will be close like that. That's all I want. So I've got close to the radius I want. Can you see it right in there? If I press down here, can you see right in there? Phil? All right. And I'm also good on this side. It's a little bit, not quite as good, but it's, it's certainly, good enough there is my frame saw joint so I'm going to do the same on the other end and then we'll get back together and I'll show you what the next stage is the next stage on this is to I've got all the, everything uh, finished out and sanded um, or should I say um, rasped filed and everything and cleaned up all the areas um, I've checked the beam in here and it works fine so I've put a number on here one and one and two to two and I've decided this is going to be the handle end I'm going to have a dedicated handle rather than having a handle at each end the benefit of having a handle at each end is you don't have to be concerned where the blade which way the blade goes around you can use either either end but I want mine dedicated I want this to be the handle um, so that when I pick it up I know which th direction the teeth are going and I don't have to look. So this is my handle end and this is the part I want to shape. Also at the top here I want to put some kind of a, of a, a shape in here where the string will go around like this. So what I do to create that 
is quick and simple. One notch down here. Picked a bad spot with the knot in there, didn't I? And a bevel edge chisel like this one here. Check your, jet, your grain direction. This is going nose diving already, so I'll use that to my advantage. So down into the valley like this. And just take out the bulk of the waist. So from here, bevel down. Read your grain as much as you can. See, this is nose diving here at this side where the knot was. But it's been fine. It's really been to my advantage in this case. You do need to know the grain and work with it. So that's my notch. Technically, I wouldn't have to do much more than this. Spoke shave, just to bear this into that hollow. Just clean up like that. Then I would probably go with a rasp, and if I didn't have a rasp, I would just go with the sandpaper in the block of wood, like this. And I'm going to just not really do much more than that. I could put a little bit of a notch in here just to hold the string in place. I don't need very much. This is fine. So that's that shape. Now I can use this one here to create the match. It's, this is heavy duty. This is kind of cumbersome but this is actually going to be a heavier saw than I might normally use because of the size of the teeth. <coughs> but you just refine yours and this is a, a, a coarse to a tool, it's going to be used for maybe cross cutting limbs, it could be used for anything, it all depends on the blade you're putting in yours. This is going to give you a saw, whether it's uh, for cutting dovetails or cutting tenons, whatever, it's going to be a saw that works. You can refine it just as much as you like. Spoke shave. Make sure these tools are out of the way. sand it, clean it up as much as you want. That's going to work. Now I've got my handle part to do. This needs to be comfortable. This is quite big on this one, so I'm going to take this inside corner just like this with a 45, more from the end, but I don't want to go too deep, I don't want to go into this notched area here, so that's that one. This works perfectly. So when my fingers go around here, it actually feels quite comfortable but I could go in here as well and make this a little narrower because it's quite big in here. That. Like 
that's reduced it quite a bit. So now it's feeling quite comfortable. <coughs> Here. Just take off the corner first. And then start feeling the corner just for size. And see how it fits your hand. Now it's feeling quite chunky still, so I'm going to go some more. And that fits my hand. That's Bruce dust. So let's put this together and see how it goes. So two goes to two there. Saw blade in here. So making sure my teeth are going towards the this end here. So now I'm looking for the hole. It's a bit like playing with sharks this is. Now you can put nuts and bolts in here if you want to. Once this is cinched up tight, these will not turn loose, so I wouldn't I wouldn't worry too much. This one doesn't want to go in. See, where are you? There you are. This doesn't want to find the hole here. Aha. Uh -huh. This end's got plugged up a little bit, I think. That's in there, that works fine. I think I'll have the screws going from the same face. There, so now we can apply pressure on here. Let's see how that goes. Now I've just got some thin cotton line and you could use nylon for this. You could use just about anything you want. I'm just gonna wrap this a couple of times here and then I just go round and round a half a dozen times or more depending, pulling it tight as I go. And you can put as many round. You don't want this to snap. But cotton's very strong, and so is nylon. So you could use either. There. I now have a frame saw or a bow saw, one and the same really. And what I like about this, actually I have one where I keep a, a hacksaw blade in it and it's wonderful because of the length of the blade for cutting steel, cutting metals. And I love that saw, it's wonderful. So good tight knot, bow on the bike here reef knot, whichever you prefer. And then I've got one stick here. This is just a stick. It needs to go just past the middle and have enough to turn it. So it doesn't matter which way you turn this. Keep cinching this tight up. Push it through to near the center. You just twist it like this. Just keep going, going, going. 
people are pretty frightened of this but this is you know this spruce is pretty stout for this and that's one of the things you don't need to go too light on the wood thinking it, it's going to break because there's a good chance that it will not break as long as you don't go too thin so that's my bow saw it's a wonderful project to make with your children and your grandchildren this one needs sharpening i know it does and uh, I cover that in another video, but let's just give it a quick pass into this wood. Feels nice and stout. There we go. It works. It just needs some refinement on the blade, and that's ready to work. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. You can see the joints here. Nice and neat, crisp, clean lines here, all the way around. This will last me probably for a hundred years. Can't see any reason why not. The blade is resharpenable. I would look for that in a, in a blade. They definitely need sharpening. They didn't come from the manufacturer as they should, ready to go. So I just have to touch them up.